throw him out the house. He goes, Dad, he's got his jeans on, no shirt, no socks, dead winter. He goes, Dad, hey, I'm really sorry for talking to you that way this morning. Please forgive me. I said, John, hey, I understand. Thank you for admitting that. And, uh, but I'm going to buy you some razors so that we'll have some extra ones here in case I use it again. He goes, Dad, use it whenever you want. I love you. I said, love you too, son. Bye. Boy, isn't that isn't that the way it's supposed to take place in our homes? Our homes are not to be perfect places. Our homes are supposed to be places of reconciliation and redemption. Folks, we are all sinners. And we all have a long road ahead of us. And God's trying to change us. One moment at a time of forgiveness and humility and sacrifice. Well, that's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one, too. That's good. That's good. These are all pretty good. This is a great one. We'll end here. But above all things, do not let it appear to the child that you demand from him unnecessary submission. Submissions. Two things. Uh, I don't know if I can get this to play. Um, Jonathan uh, called me, and uh, he was down in Scranton, which is about 20, where he was, about 22 miles away. I was at the office, and I was getting ready to go to California the next morning. I had to get up at 4, be at the airport at 4 30, uh, be at the airport at 5, and I'm finishing a new seminar. And I'm exhausted. It's 10 o'clock at night, and I get this phone call at my office. And I pick it up, and it's Jonathan. He said, Dad, I got a migraine headache. Could you bring some aspirin down to the studio? 22 miles away, 44 miles round trip. And I'm thinking, like, are you serious? Just go down to the 7-Eleven, just 200 feet from where you are. Get it yourself. What's wrong with you, you lazy bum? Go get it. But I had prayed that morning, Lord, if there's an opportunity for me to serve my son today, please provide it. I, I, as soon as he asked me for the aspirin, the Lord brought it to my mind that I had asked for an opportunity to serve. It always comes at the most inconvenient times. <laughs> I said, I'll be right there. I get down there, I give him the aspirin, and I'm, I'm out of there. And he goes, Dad, would you listen to this one song? It's a song you're listening to right now. And I, um, I said, okay. And so I'm, I'm sitting there. Actually, this is not the song. It was an the next one on this list. And I'm sitting there listening to it, and, uh, and he said, what do you think, Dad? I said, I like it. It's really good. He said, can you, can you listen to this next one, please? Just I'm trying to get some, some advice here. And I just sat there and realized, wow. Yes, he wanted the aspirin, but more than that, he wanted his dad's affirmation. Sometimes serving our kids are not always convenient. But God will give us an opportunity to serve them just as it was inconvenient for Christ to come to this world and die for us. I got a phone call um, about a week later. It was summertime. It was spaghetti night. I love spaghetti. And it said, Dad, I need a screwdriver. Would you please bring it up to the end of the driveway? I said, who is this? I said, Dad, it's Jonathan. I'm at the end of the driveway. I'm under the car. And I need a screwdriver. I said, Jonathan, I don't remember ever installing a phone at the end of the driveway. <laughs> he said, Dad, I got a cell phone. A what? A cell phone. You bought a cell phone? Dad, I'm not calling you to talk about my financial purchases of my cell phone. I need a screwdriver. I'm holding the part. I'm under the car. I said, Jonathan, you're 200 feet away from the house and you're calling me to get you a screwdriver? It is supper time. Don't ever use your cell phone to call me to do something that you can do for yourself. Are you kidding me? Click. This great stuff that I teach goes so far. I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> and Debbie looked at me and she said, who's that? I said, it's Jonathan. She said, what did he want? He wants me to bring him a screwdriver at the end of the driveway. She said, where is it? I'll get it. No, you won't. That's why he's like he is. <laughs> now I've cowered my wife. Now I've got marital conflict. My son comes down. He 
we got this dark cloud hanging over our, our house again, and this is the bad one. Now this is when things are getting already getting restored. It's amazing how quickly things can be reversed. I hate it. You know, one day I have a perfect day, and I told the Lord, just take me out. <laughs> one perfect day, and I'm out of here. This lasted for two weeks. And I, I, can't, I can't speak on the family when my family has problems at home. I can't do it. I just, it destroys me. So we have, we go to counseling. We haven't been alone for several years, but we had this counselor friend that really helped us. We went for six years. And so it got to be kind of routine. And for me, it was like going to seminary. And I just loved listening to his advice and counsel and wisdom. I called him up and said, Steve, I said, we got a problem. Can you help us? I said, sure, come on over. So Debbie and I went over and I explained the situation. He said, Mark, he said, you know what, all the times you've been here, he said, this is the first time that I can guarantee you that your wife should not have gotten that screwdriver brought to Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, Steve. Debbie looked said, I don't agree. I said, well, Debbie, he's the counselor. <laughs> I don't mind paying the $85. <laughs> Steve, good. Here you go, Steve. Have a great night. On our way out, he goes, um, Mark, hold on one second. I said, no, that's fine. I don't need to know anymore. He goes, um, your, your wife shouldn't have gotten a screwdriver. But you shouldn't have. Said, Why? Why? I would have never dreamed of asking my dad to do something like that for me. Steve, come on, this is ridiculous. This kid's never going to grow up to be responsible. He said, you should have gotten a screwdriver because the reason he asked you to get it is because that's all he's ever heard and seen from his father. Jonathan, I want you to do this, and after you've done this, do this. He said, he's only following the model that he's ever seen, a father who uses someone else for his gain. And if you're going to break that cycle, you need to learn to serve. God bless you all. Thank you. Hey, have a great day.